Uh, moving on straight into the discussion, we have a political analyst and a columnist with Daily Trust newspapers, Ilya Sugandu. He has written several articles about the unfolding scenario and he joins us in the studio today. Good morning and welcome yeah, to Daybreak. Good morning, how are you? Fine, thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. Thank you. All right, so we also have uh, joining us virtually uh, public affairs analyst Ario Atoye from Ekiti. Good morning and welcome. Okay, I, I now uh, let's move well. on to, uh, you know, uh, the first question. Now, you wrote an article uh, titled Tinubu's Problematic Presidential Aspiration. What informed your decision to actually write this particular article? First of all, Tinubu's um, presidential ambitions is the worst kept secret in Nigerian politics. From 2015, when he yielded the political space to allow President Buhari to become, oh sorry, candidate Buhari then, mm -hmm. to become the flag bearer, I mean to help march, you know, the parties into uh, APC and now of course to yield the platform to President Buhari, Buhari then, candidate Buhari to become the president. He had his heights on the presidency. And that was a strategic move. And from his body language and from his activities, you knew that he was eventually working towards making sure he became the president or the, the, the flag bearer of the APC that he helped to form. So it wasn't a matter of you know uh, hide and seek. It was there. It was just waiting for time. And what happened the other day when he met Mr. President to declare his intention was a culmination of what we all knew was going to happen. So it's not a secret, it's the worst kept secret in Nigerian politics, if I thought it was a secret, because a lot of us knew what was the trajectory of Tinubu, and we knew that there was only one thing he was going to look for, and that is the presidency. And, you know, following the fact that Buhari, President Buhari is going to, you know, um, is going to conclude his term, you know, in, a, in one year or so, I saw Ajibola Tinubu decided to pitch in to ensure that you know he kept you know hope with his ambition. So it's not it's actually not not it's a non-event really. It's it's what has been built to happen and it has happened. Now do you see a problem <laughs> with this strategy? You know it's almost as if everyone already knew, like you said, mm. uh, that this is where it's heading. So. Uh, do you think that this has an implication on, you know, the, the perception of people, uh, Nigerians generally, about his political journey? Yeah, well, for me, let me just say clearly, Tinubu went to see Mr. President to tell him about his, uh, you know, his presidential ambition uh, because he felt he, had, he, had, he, had, he needed to tell Mr. President, look, President Buhari, I've come to get my ROU from you. I gave you the chance in 2015, and I'm coming here to make sure that you kept your word, or at least kept the agreement we had, unspoken agreement. So it's like going to remind Mr. President, look, I'm coming here, I want to you know, take the plunge, and I want to make sure that you, you know, uh, agree to what we agreed on. You, 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 you endorse what we agree on, because I don't want to get into the field without your backing. So for me, that is what Tinubu went to do to the president he didn't he didn't he, he went there to get his iou the iou he 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 get mr president mm -hmm. in 2015 and say look now you are leaving you know i want us to get back to what we agreed on mm -hmm. you know so, so but, but whether or not that will work in his favor you know that's what i'm looking at um some will say that it's no longer a secret i mean we've always known this is where you are heading so would that have given enough time you know, for opponents or, you know, people who are also <laughs> eyeing the 2023 presidential election to have, you know, maybe some plans to uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, well, we, know, we all know that, it's, I mean, Tinubu is not the only uh, personality within the APC that is angling for that position, the, the, the ticket of APC, and hopefully to win the election, you know, in 2023. But, you know, from, from time, from the time that the APC was set up, under his auspices, under his uh, very great uh, contributions, we, Tinubu, as the strategist he is, decided to ensure that he kept lock on 
you know, the, the, the party and his presence and his strategies to ensure that, you know, nobody else emerged, you know, within the party to, 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 to countermand his, you know, position as the leader of the party. If you notice, you know, Buhari, President Buhari is supposed to be the, 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 the leader of the party, but also he shares, Tidubu contrived to share the limelight with Mr. President. Even the vice president, who is supposed to be the second in command of the country, and by, 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 that, by that term, the second in command of the party, Tidubu made sure that, look, I wouldn't share the limelight with you. Yes, I will yield the ground to Mr. President because he, he's, he is the man of the moment. But once Mr. President goes, I want to be there and nobody else is going to take that position from me. And I'm going to make sure that that happens mm -hmm. eventually. All right. Uh, now, uh, you wrote in your article that it will, and I quote, it will take a foolish man to bet against Tinubu running for presidency in 2023. Kindly elaborate. Yeah, what I meant was that, look, it's all clear that's from what I said, you know, earlier on, mm. that the signs have has always, have always been there that he was going to, you know, uh, contest, you know, the, the the seat, and he was going to make sure that he contested on the APC, and that you knew that that would be the culmination of Tinubu's political trajectory. He had been a senator, he had been a governor, and what else? Mm. The, what else? What else is for him to be president? All this, you know, political trajectory he has had all the while was climaxing towards becoming the president of the country, and he wasn't going to yield the ground for anybody. And if anybody thought, you know, you know, Tinubu was going to be uh, persuaded by arguments that he was too old or he was too, you know, he was sick or something like that, he wasn't going to fly mm. because he had intentions to become the president of this country right from when he helped to you know match the, the pol other political parties into APC so it's not, it's it's like almost like what i would say a slam dunk mm. that, now, a number of issues actually raised in that article um, about his educational qualification uh, you know <coughs> the decision to pick a running mate uh, you know his political career being predominantly in the southwestern region of the country you know and you know how he hopes to achieve uh, the support, the needed support he he needs, you know, from the northern part of the country in this uh, his political ambition. So let's begin with his uh, educational qualification. You think that there's a there's something to worry about there? Yeah, there is. There is. I mean, despite the fact that he has spin doctors, people trying to airbrush his uh, you know educational qualifications, but there's still question marks about his. You know, you know his initial educational, you know, uh, you know, uh, development. I mean, for instance, when there, there were conflicting reports of his having attended, you know, a, a government college in Biden and another school in Lagos and some elsewhere. This has not. I mean, there has not been clearly, clearly stated facts about which secondary school he attended, which college he attended, and this has been lingering on. Of course, there have been you know, one or two cases to prove that, but it has been inconclusive. Yeah. So we, these are things that he will have to take on board because questions will be asked. He has come in, out into the limelight now. He's seeking the presidency of this country. He's not seeking the leadership of the Southwest. He's seeking the presidency of this country. And that will feature very prominently. And going from the primary, from the secondary school, you will also have to question him about, you know, his you know, tertiary, you know, uh, qualifications. And at one point, it was said he attended University of Chicago, mm -hmm. but then, of course, it was debunked, and then it said he attended Richard Daly School in Chicago. That, too, you know, you know, is dodgy. Even though, of course, yeah, there are evidence that he attended Richard Daly School, but then what kind of school is it? One moment you said you are from, you attended University of Chicago. The next moment, you now had to beat a history retreat to say you attended Richard Daly School. So there are a lot of inconsistencies that he has to deal with. These are some of the problematic issues about him. Of course, there are other things regarding his candidacy, his aspirations, but this, uh, this forms one of them, one of the key areas in which he has to come clean. This is not an issue to hide over because these are issues that you have to prove. You have to prove by showing clear, conclusive, documentary facts that you attended the schools for people to 
actually, in fact, one of the qualifications of being a president is that you must have attended the secondary school. And if he has to prove those things to Nigerians. All right. Now, uh, you called him the undisputed king of the Southwest. But uh, <coughs> that doesn't compare, you know, uh, with the national political scene. Just how much influence does he have nationally? Well, you know, well, he's definitely, there are no arguments about his influence, political influence in the Southwest. I mean, he is, he is the kingpin of Lagos politics. That's indisputable. And to a very large extent, he has a following in the Southwest that is quite remarkable, that is quite unassailable. I don't think there's any argument about whether, you know, Tinubu's uh, political weight in the Southwest, there's no, there's, there isn't any argument in that respect. But when it comes to the national, you know, arena, that's where, you know, we begin to have question marks. And Tinubu has, uh, has, has uh, you know, has tended to, 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 to close that gap by using political agents. He's not connected with the grassroots nationally. He's using political agents and proxies to penetrate. He thinks, okay, I have the Southwest lock and key, mm -hmm. and then I could just use my, you know, um, uh, you know agents in parts of the North, especially the Northwest, to be able to help me carry my candidacy there, which is which is quite unlike, for instance, another side, uh, you know, uh, like Abiola, for instance, who had connections direct, yeah. you know, with the you know uh, with, with uh, nationally, so he didn't have to you know look for agents. Of course, the point is you need people who will help you carry the message down there, but he had direct links, direct you know uh, you know. Uh, linkages with the, with, the, with the grassroots out there. So it didn't, it was bottoms up kind of thing. But in the case of Tinubu, it's going to be top bottom. And that is dodgy, really, because okay. you wouldn't know whether these agents are real or not. Okay. All right. Well, we'll get some more thoughts about this, you know. But let's connect with our guest uh, over in Ekiti, who is joining us uh, virtually, uh, Rio Atoye a public affairs analyst. Uh, if you can hear me, let's get your own reaction, initial reaction, you know, about the uh, declaration of, uh, for the presidential bid in 2023 by uh, Asiwaju Bola Well, thank you very much. I don't know if you can hear me very well. Um, I know the network has been a bit uh, breaking, um, but I want to first commend the Daily Trust uh, TV for your uh, timely programs and your intervention in national issues. I want to say that uh, the declaration by Chinubu is a constitutional right. He has a right, like every other Nigerian, to declare his interest to run. We cannot take that away. And he has also been around as national leader of the APC. He is a Lagos politician, Southwest leader, and also, like I said, national leader in the APC. However, um, with what we've seen in the last six years of the President Muhammad Buhari administration, it's important that we have to do what we call soul searching as a nation. We have to think deeply whether this is the route we want to go, whether this is the path that is defeating for us, whether this is a journey that we should embark upon. But one thing Nigerians must know is this. Part of the reasons why I think the President deliberately granted some interview in the last couple of days on channels and probably on NTA was to explain certain things and probably uh, to guide Nigerians against certain tendencies. The president told us about working for about six hours or less. The president told us that he is tired. The president told us certain things. I want to say that I think this president is giving us this information for us not to go through this part of electing old people again into power, it has to be based on capacity, it has to be based on the competence to be able to govern. Tinubu doesn't fit into this category. It is only in Nigeria that will be deceiving ourselves. We know that Ashiwaju doesn't have the health and the mental capacity to govern a complex nation like Nigeria at this point in time. This is this is a fact. This is not this is not eating. And, and it's quite unfortunate that even he himself will be throwing himself, throwing his hat in the ring. I don't know what this man loves. We don't want to want we don't want to have another pensioner. Villa, this country is too important to be governed by people who want to turn
to, uh, our virtual guest there talking, uh, Ario Atoye, is talking about you know, physical capacity, mental capacity. I mean, if you look at 2015, the same was said you know, about the current president, and he's still a match. So, uh, talking about political alliance, you know, and uh, uh, that the uh, Siwaju needs to foster, you know, for him to actually realize this is his dream of becoming uh, the president. If you look at, in his case, uh, or I would say rather in the, uh, the case of the current president, uh, you have him who is very strong in the northern region, and then, of course, aligned with, uh, with the Asiwaju, who is in the southwest, is also a very uh, strong, influential politician there. But in the case of Asiwaju now, uh, and if you look at the northern uh, uh, region, given the fact that the president has given this posture that, look, he's not going to be involved in the politics of 2023 and all of that, do you think that Asiwaju has these alliances that he needs to actually... You First know, of all, this. I think uh, we, we need to make a point. You know, I think uh, the the issue of, uh, you know, Asiwaju Bola Tinubu going to Aso Villa to declare his intention is inappropriate. Aso Villa is owned by Nigerians. It's not an APC, you know, secretariat. It's not owned by APC. Yes, the government in power is APC, yes. But Aso Villa is a neutral venue of Nigerians. If you wanted to go and talk to Mr. President about your ambitions, keep it under wraps. And the presidency should not encourage that because next time another presidential aspirant within APC will come, will, will demand his right to go to, AP, to go to Aso Villa and also talk to Mr. President and, and we'll, come we'll, out. We've seen that already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and come out and say, look, I, I've come and, and it shouldn't be allowed. It shouldn't be encouraged. If it happened with Tinubu and uh, David Umahi, it shouldn't happen because you know, we should be stopped because really we don't want to turn Aso Villa into a partisan political uh, tough for, for presidential aspirants. And if that goes on, the P PDP aspirants too and other aspirants from other parties could also ask for the same favors. Mm. So I think Mr. President should tell his minions that, look, discourage this, you know, political pilgrimage here. But then be that as it may, Tinubu, you know, wants to replicate, you know, the, 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 the template that brought Buhari to power. He's trying to say, look, hey, it's now my turn to get this thing. And he's, he's going about it in a, in, a, in a desperate and in a sense of desperateness, mm. the desperatism and self-entitlement. And, and again, if you look at the political, uh, I would say the approval rating of the president as at against 2015, you know, his goodwill and all of that. Does he still have that, you know, to be able to uh, translate that into supporting a, a candidate? That is like why that, the president too. wisely stayed out of the fray, because he knows that his uh, stock, political stock, if I would say that, mm -hmm. it's, it's waning. And anybody, it's, 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 it's not, I would uh, use the term again, it's not slam dunk that if Mr. President endorses you, yeah. you are going to get it, because there are quite a lot of issues. And Tinwu made a very tactical error in saying he was going to continue with Mr. President's, uh, you know, uh, you know, policies and, uh, and, and, and measures. And that to me, it's, it's, if he had measured the mood of Nigerians for him to say that, I think he should be well advised to, ta to, to really, really, you know, make sure he doesn't make such statements again, because there's quite a long, there's quite a long haul to go. And if he continue to make that statement, he will now be you know, uh, be, be, be putting himself in the same, uh, you know, uh, straight jacket as Mr. President, whose performances as question, uh, I, 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 I been questioned now by people who actually loved him. Me here, one of them. Mm. So at the end of the day, Tinubu's political alliances in the North are dodgy because he has not been able to link up with the people that matter. He's linking up, he's trying to look for political agents to carry his message down across. And those agents themselves are becoming very, very irrelevant to, 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 to the politics we have. And my colleague there in uh, Adwik, it has just said it. The mood in the country is not for people like Tinubu. If we, we've seen what has happened in the case of Mr. President, who himself has actually agreed that he's, he's finding it not easy to go on with this, with this, with this, you know, elevating, you know, you know, high demanding job at his age. And Tinubu 
you know, it's, 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 it's not any better. It's it? not any better. <laughs> we don't want a president that would, you know, spend, you know, the next six months again out of, we have quite a lot of issues in Nigeria to cope with. Mm -hmm. And he, we need a president that is hands on, a president that would be available, a president that would not be, you know, having to hop on planes to go abroad to get treatment, and then the government stops. We want them that. We mm. have experience with Buhari. We don't want that. And if Tinubu is not up to it, health, mental, health-wise, mentally, he should think again mm. because it will not go well. These are some of the issues that will, you know, engage the attentions of Nigerians, and they are going to, you know, task him on that. Okay. All right. Let's let's now take a quick break. You know, and then when we come back, we will continue this discussion. Uh, still talking about reactions trailing. Uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu's declaration to run for the presidential election in 2023. Stay with us. Good people of Federal Capital Territory, the area council elections will be conducted on Saturday, February 12th, 2022. This is an opportunity for you to vote for the candidate of your choice for the positions of chairman and councillors of the area councils. Elections will take place in all six area councils of Amak, Abaji, Kwali, Gwagolada, Kujay, and Buari. The FCT administration is working closely with INEC to ensure that the elections are conducted in a free and fair atmosphere. Are you a supporter of any of the candidates in the elections? Avoid showing your support through toggery and violent behavior. All candidates contesting various positions should remember that only God gives power. Elections should therefore not be seen as a do-or-die affair. We must shun any form of violence, malpractices, vote buying, ballot box snatching, or anything that will make the election unfair. Be patriotic. Perform your civic duties. Vote for the candidate of your choice in a peaceful and orderly manner. Let all electorates exercise their franchise without intimidation. Voting is your right. You Use it wisely. This message is from the FCT administration. The board and management of Media Trust Limited invites the general public to its annual daily trust dialogue themed 2023, the politics, economy and insecurity. Date, 20th January 2022. Location, NAF Conference Center and Suites, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Chairman of the occasion, former head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, GCFR. Guest speaker, Governor of Kaduna State, Marlon Nasr Ahmed El Rufai. Guest Speaker, Governor of Ibonyi State, Engineer David Umahi. Guest Speaker, Former Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mrs. Ifueko Omoigui Okauru. Moderator, Executive Director, Daria Media Nigeria Limited, Kaderia Ahmed. The event will be transmitted live on Trust TV, and all participants must observe COVID-19 protocols and wear their face masks. All right, welcome back. You're still watching Daybreak on Trust TV. Still talking about uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu's presidential aspirations. Uh, we've been able to reconnect with our guest from Ekiti, Ario Atoye. He's a public affairs analyst. Now, let me push this particular uh, question to you. Uh, let's talk about the party he's running under, talking about the APC, because uh, right now Nigerians seem to have lost hope in them. Don't you think that poses some kind of challenge, you know, uh, you know, for him? I don't know if you can hear me very well. Um, uh, I know the network is a bit uh, awkward. But in the line of what I've heard so far, especially from your guest, um, not necessarily you have to have a national presence in terms of getting every, I mean, to have a national presence to be able to be known nationwide in every state, in every local government, in every world, or to have political acceptability. No, that is not the way a presidential system of government is wired. What you need to do in a presidential system of government is to have um, electability profile, is to have the capacity to govern, is to be able to build a political structure, is to be able to reach out to people in every state, in every zone, in every region. That is the way a presidential system of government ought to be in an heterogeneous uh, 
complex nation like Nigeria. So Tinubu doesn't really uh, need to have uh, that towering presence and say it's a, uh, it's a figure that must, you know, be everywhere. No. Tinubu is a household name in Nigeria. It's known across the north, across the south, east to west. That is, cannot be taken away from him. But building that electability profile to be able to, you know, win the hearts of the people is a different thing entirely. But at this point in time, and I think the media has a role to play in other climbs, the media take a firm position and say, we do, this is our position on the subject matter. The media can take that position. We've done, we've seen that done in different climes in the US, in the UK. Look, we have all suffered from misgovernance in this country in the last couple of decades. We've all suffered from misgovernance in this country in the last couple of years. And we have a responsibility, both media, civil society, analysts, and everybody, to ensure that we do not allow some individuals who you can call spent force or spent forces, people who do not have the capacity to lead us as a nation. Now, a good number of us have elderly people at home, people are over 70, who are over 75. We know how it is. We should thank the likes of Tinubu and people in his league for the role they've played in our Right, we'll, we'll try to, to reconnect uh, with uh, Ario Toy there. Uh, he, well, I don't think uh, he actually answered the question because uh, network and he didn't hear. But you know, uh, Mr. Elias, can actually talk about uh, you know him being in the APC, you know, being uh, posing a challenge for his aspirations. Well, you know, um, I would. My concern really, with apart from the fact that, well. By and large, Tinubu has a constitutional right to contest. We are just talking about the qualities and the misgivings we have, but that wouldn't stop him from contesting the elections and contesting, you know, the, the, the ticket of the party and subsequently the elections. But there should be a level playing field. I mean, Tinubu seems to have this sense of entitlement, seems to feel that, you know, uh, the APC owes him something because he supported Mr. President and to be, he marched to where he is today. And so it's, it's like, look, the party must give me that ticket, you know, you know, or the highway. That shouldn't be the issue. There are people within the, within the APC who are capable, who should also be given the chance, a level playing field. It's not a matter of APC doesn't belong to Buhari and uh, Tinubu alone. There are people, people who have labored to make APC where it is now. So they should also be given the, the same level chances. So it shouldn't be a matter of that. Look, it's either Tinubu or the highway. Or yeah, but, but if you look at the pillars, you know, uh, back in 2015, it's more like a Buhari Tinubu affair because. Uh, the ACN on one hand, and then you have the CPC on the other hand. You know, these are the major <laughs> political parties, you know, that came together to, you know... Uh, yeah, that, that, that was in 2015. Yeah. We, have, we, have, we, have, we have come across, uh, we have spent six years now of, of, the, of, of that arrangement, and it's left to Nigerians to say, look, hey, that arrangement came in with quite a, number of, with quite a lot of promise. But uh, we, we have a right to say, look, we, we, this is how we feel, about the, that, that arrangement, and uh, we are not bound by what Tinubu and Buhari sat down to agree on. We have the right, we have the final say, and if the, if the arrangement didn't work for us for the past six years, we have a right to say, look, we want to go differently, just like we did with PDP. So it's not a matter of entitlement and, and desperatism like Tinubu is showing that he has to get, the, he has a God complex a messiah complex that, look, it's my turn. We, it, in 2015, there was an arrangement, you know, that I helped to bring Buhari, and in 20, 2023 or 2022, the party must give me that ticket. No, mm. it's not, it doesn't work like no, that. No, he has no. to, he has to, there has to be a level playing field for people within the, within the party to also pitch their tenth. Mm -hmm. Others have also raised this question about, you know, Nigeria's unity and cohesion. 
Uh, looking at the mood of the country at the moment, you know, there are those, of course, as usual, in, it's a traditional way in Nigeria, politics is always viewed in the lines of, you know, ethnic and religious uh, lines, even though that have its own negativity and impl negative implication, you know, on our politics. But, I mean, this is a reality of Nigeria. And so people are talking about, you know, uh, the Asiwaju, you know, from the Southwest being a Muslim and, you know, the zoning conversation in the APC and all of that. How is that going to have an implication, you know, on the the crisis in the past. This is one of this is one of the problematic issues I raise about Tinubu's presidential asp aspiration. And you know, well, we at, at this you know haven't come this far, six, 60, 60 something plus years. We shouldn't be talking about you know whether we should have unity. It's given. It should be given. But then these are issues that have come up in the public space. We cannot deny them. We cannot wish them away. We cannot ignore them. And that. This has become one of the you know, uh, key issues in our political discourse and the political activities. So if the issue is that, okay, Tinubu power is going to shift to the southwest by the arrangements of the political parties, not the constitution anyway, by the way, if that's what the parties have agreed upon or have tacitly or whatever agreed upon, yes, Tinubu is going to be, well, he, he hopes to be the presidential you know, candidate of the APC, then, of course, by virtue of balancing in terms of religious considerations, you might want to say that, look, he must take somebody from the north, which is the next uh, geographical region, region that would now take the vice president, vice, vice, the running mate slot. And being a Muslim from the southwest, he has not renounced his Islamic uh, you know, faith. Then, of course, you'd expect, going by the sentiments and whatever, that a Christian from the north would be his... Uh, Mate. But then, of course, you have to also look at that in the, on the basis of the voting you know, power and the voting situation in the North. Because we all know that in the North, at least you know, majority of the people living in the Northwest, Northeast and North Central, if you take the whole tally of those areas, Muslims you know, uh, are, in, are in the majority. Now, if you take, if Tirubu being a, Christ, a, a Muslim from the Southwest, West, takes a, a, a running mate from the north as his run, uh, uh, from the north then that also becomes problematic because then you are going to give the signal to the uh, unfortunately to the christians from the north that they that they, they reckon with and it's also it's going to also reverberate in the south because it's going to be a muslim muslim ticket we have gone past the abiola time when you have king Gibe and abiola now these issues are very very you know very very germane but and why are they feature. even so important i mean we've always talked about for nigeria to you know realize the dreams you know of the forefathers nigeria must be able to pass you know go beyond this ethno-religious sentiments and all of that that focus should be more on the merits of candidates instead of you know, some of these primordial uh, sentiments. So why is it so strong? Yeah, time? because it's the politicians themselves that promote it. I don't, I don't have an issue with it. I don't have an issue with it. The fact that you are Muslim from anywhere or the Christian from anywhere, it's no skin off my nose, really. What I want is good governance. And what majority of Nigerians want is good governance. But the politicians promote it because that is their comfort zone. That is what they use to get to power. They cannot give us, in the absence of giving us ideology or giving us ideas, cutting, ide cutting edge ideas that would promote and advance the progress of this country, they are looking at these issues which don't count anyway. Because a lot of us now today are products of the Nigerian experience. A lot of us, there are many Nigerians today, majority of Nigerians today cannot really claim that they really you know, were born, bred, you know, you know and, 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 and became what they are. In their locality, they must have had to touch one or two areas in the country. So we should move along that way. But the politicians are not moving in that direction. They want easy and ready-made ways to get to power. And these are some of the issues that they help to promote to suit their aims. I don't, I don't have any issues about any Christian or any Muslim becoming president. What I have issues about is good governance. Let me get the basics of life. And then that's it. Okay, now uh, let's talk about.
about Nigeria's fight against corruption. And we're all aware that uh, Tinubu was uh, once accused by a Nigerian chartered accountant, that's Dakpo Akbara, you know, of money laundering, fraud, tax evasion, and sundry corrupt practices. Yes, the case is still going on. I mean, it's, it's in relation to, you know, a company that, you know, that, was, that, that came up during his tenure to collect taxes, you know, in Lagos, or, you know, on, be, on behalf of the Lagos state government. And uh, along the line, it was found out that, you know, the, the company is linked to Tinubu. And, of course, there was a lot of humongous, you know, sums. Of course, it improved, helped improve the tax situation and the revenue situation in Lagos. But then it was also found out that there are conduits through which, you know, uh, Tinubu gained... Uh, I mean, allegedly, you know, gained from the operations of this company. Now, the issue is subsidies is under, you know, uh, consideration in the courts. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should leave it at that point. But then, of course, it's one of those issues that have refused to go. A lot of Lagosians, some prominent Lagosians have made issue about that. And they also talk about Tinubu's nepotism. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, he, you know, um, you know, have tend of course, I mean, you have to give him credit for, placing people in different, you know, places. But when it comes to some of the key positions, you know, that, you know, he, he rides over, uh, you know, over, over, over the considerations of, and place his people in very, very key positions, mm. you right. know. And also the fact, too, that he's unforgiving. Mm. For instance, in the case of the Ambode issue, you know, this is, a, this is a governor that, okay, you know, was doing well as far as Lagosians are concerned. And of course, because of his personal ambitions and personal, you know, considerations, he didn't allow or he made, put the spanner in the works of the, the, the governor, the, the governor Ambody, you know, coming back as, you know, for a second term. Now, of course, you could say it was the, 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 the decision of the Lagos people, but of course, you know, the hand of Tinubu weighed very heavily on that decision. Okay. All right. Now let's get final thoughts uh, from our guest in Adoe Kiti, uh, Ario Atoe, who is uh, standing by there. Well, I'm, I'm sure that you've been following, even though we've been having challenges uh, with the network. Now, looking at, you know, the mood generally in the country, you know, about national cohesion, you know, unity and all of that. Uh, does Tinubu fit into that category of people that, you know, serve as rallying point for uh, Nigerians, especially, if, you know, from the earlier point that, uh, that you are making about having that national appeal, you know, to be able to win election? Again, let me say this, that um, Tinubu will be probably maybe judge as a smart politician, uh, a good politician, if the reason why he's in the race is not probably to be the president, but to be involved in the arrangement so that he could also strategically and significantly determine the next president of Nigeria. We will give it to him that indeed is a smart politician. But if it is about really fulfilling his lifelong uh, ambition like it's been reported and he wants to be the president and i think that will be uh like telling him it is already late in the day uh in terms of the dynamics unity because nigeria is like you said a nation that is heterogeneous in nature and you can't take that away now chinobu's ambition let's even look at the context of the muslim or the religious uh, issue. Um, I did be maybe somebody like Fashola that is also Ronnie, who is also a Muslim. Um, this same scenario will also play out in terms of balancing religious sensit sensitivity. The problem here is this. The Southwest is willing and able to bring a Muslim or a Christian. It's not a problem for us in the Southwest. Anybody, you know, can be. But the problem is whether the Connaught will support a minority or a Christians on the North to be the vice president to a major political party, either PDP or APC, in case PDP is also bringing in its own president. Well, unfortunately, uh, we do apologize for the hitches there experience uh, due to, you know, bad network. Uh, there, but th that was uh, Ario Atoye, a public affairs analyst, joining us from Adoe Kitty 
giving us his own perspectives on the candidature of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Well, that's uh, unfortunately because of our time, we have to move on. Yeah. <laughs> but if I may, just give you one minute to round up. Yeah, well, thoughts. I mean, notwithstanding the fact that <coughs> Bola Ahmed Tinubu, like any Nigerian, is qualified or is guaranteed constitutional rights to contest the elections, but we have to look at the salient issues. And of course, there's, there's, a, there's a body of opinion, building body of opinion, that he has played his part very well and that he should actually, at this, situ at this point in time, you know, yield the ground to somebody else so as to continue the effort of nation building that we have, got, we have done. And in that respect, he will you know, you know, you know, write his name in gold in the annals of Nigerian political history. Mm. All right, thank you so much for coming uh, on the program and sharing your thoughts with us. We've been speaking with Elias Gadu, who is a contributor to Daily Trust uh, and uh, also a columnist, public affairs analyst and you know, uh, commentator. Now, we were also joined by Ario Atoye, who is a public affairs analyst joining us from Adwekiti Journals Virtually. With that, we wrap up the show today. Yes, we do. Thank you so much for watching from beginning to end. We'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same station. I'm Dashen Husseina Usman. And for those who have missed, you can always catch up on our YouTube. This is being streamed live on YouTube and also uh, uploaded there for you to have a preview much later. You can also connect with us on all our social media handles for other uh, stories. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.